and detonated to provide us with the answers. This was Operation Wigwam. D-Day, the 14th of May, 1955. H-Hour. Officially, 12.59 and 59.884. Let's say 1,300 hours Pacific Daylight Time. Our location, 28 degrees, 44 minutes north, and 126 degrees, 16 minutes west. Approximately 500 miles west-southwest of San Diego. We are reviewing the shot from the command ship, the USS Mount McKinley. We're held at Canavi Gulf, Haiti, by the Underwater Explosion Research Division of the Norfolk Naval Shipyard and the David Taylor Model Basin from 1952 through late spring of 1954. Weapon procurement and placement and evaluation of its performance and measurements of free field pressures and other transient underwater and surface investigations. Notice the cloud chamber effect and the focusing of the reflected shock wave. This latter phenomenon was caused by the local valleys and hills in the sea floor. In at least one area, 15,000 feet from zero, the water was strongly whitened indicating pressures in the neighborhood of several hundred pounds per square inch, about that to be expected at 10,000 feet, and enough to cause the collapse of light-hulled submarine. At other places, the bottom reflected shock appeared to be missing completely. At the Mount McKinley, five miles from zero, the bottom reflected shock was several times as intense as the direct shock wave. The initial spray dome, caused by the arrival of the primary shock wave, reached a maximum height of 147 feet at 2.4 seconds after detonation. The second dome, formed at approximately 2.5 seconds, accompanied by individual plumes, reached a height of 800 feet in about 7 seconds. Two well-defined plume formations occurred. The first plumes reaching a diameter of 3,100 feet and a maximum height of 1,410 feet, 19 seconds after detonation. The second well-defined plume reached a height of 770 feet, 38 seconds after detonation. The outfall and descent of the material in the several plumes resulted in a well-defined base surge about 640 feet in height and extending outward about 4,800 feet. The great mass of water thrown into the air resulted in surface waves that were about two and a half times the maximum height predicted. Should not be expected at ranges greater than 4,000 feet. Minor shock damage may be expected at ranges from 7,000 feet to several miles. Aircraft at any altitude should be safe at horizontal ranges in excess of one mile. The underwater pressure time field of the Wigwam burst was similar in most respects to that computed for 40 million pounds of TNT at ranges greater than 1,000 feet. The peak pressure in air above this burst may be computed from acoustic theory. To relate the Wigwam experiment directly to the problem of our continued national security, the scientific information obtained by this operation has contributed greatly to the design of systems for the defense against enemy submarines. <laughs>